Hi, my name's Chrissy from Jigsaw For You, and today I'll be interviewing very special guests. Hi, I'm Joanne Clifton, ex Strictly Pro, ex Strictly Champion 2016, also fifth in Britain in jigsaw puzzling. Had to get that in. And I am the new ambassador for Jigsaw For You. I am the ambassador of positivity and play. Thank you for joining us now. Let's get started with the questions. Since you come from a family famous for dancing, how did you feel about that growing up? Oh, so I was I was the one because my big brother Kevin, he's a dancer as well. He was on Strictly as well. I'm the younger child, right? And so my parents didn't actually want us to dance because they were dancers themselves. My grandparents were dancers. My auntie was a dancer and they were all competitors. So they knew what it took in terms of like sacrifice and practice and money and uh, dealing with being defeated and stuff like that. Um, and they didn't actually want us to dance. Um, but they had their own dance school in Grimsby. They still have their own dance school in Grimsby. And my brother being the older one, he started joining in in the classes when, you know, there was no babysitters, so we had to go with them. My brother started joining in. And I just started copying him. But uh, growing up with it all, like once they realised that we were deadly serious, we didn't want to just be like doing it for fun. We wanted to go into competitions and stuff like that. Kevin was always the one who was like, yeah, I want to be world champion, I want to be world champion, I want to be world champion. I love dancing, but I also wanted to do other stuff. I was never like 100% a dancer, even though I danced with him and did competitions. But as our parents had warned us, lots of practice, lots of lessons, you know, we'd go to school, we'd finish school, come home, quickly do our homework, have something to eat and then go to practice or go to have lessons at the weekends we'll be going down to London to have lessons with people like Shirley Ballas um, and then competitions on the Sundays and stuff so it was full on even though I was always like on the fence I was like mm, I don't know whether I want to always be a dancer or not but it got to the point where me and my brother danced with each other and um, it got to the point where doing a rumba it's a bit weird because rumba's the dance of love so I was like stroking my brother's face and I was like no not having that that's too weird not doing that so I then was like mm, maybe I want to go to a theatre school instead but my parents obviously having Kevin dance as well couldn't afford for both so I stayed with the dancing and moved to Italy at 16. Um, on the topic of dance who would you say is a better dancer you or your brother? Oh, listen, who was the world champion out of me and Kevin? Me. Who won this? Who won this first? Hey, me. And I won it against him. So we were both in the final that year in 2016 and I won it. It was actually Len Goodman's last year uh, of judging. And um, then he won it. He did win it and that's fine. But he won it in 2018 when I'd left. So he didn't win it against me. So I think that just proves that I'm the best. However, he has always been an inspiration to me. The way that he performs and the the kind of like giving it 150% every time he went on that dance floor or on the stage. So being being my older brother, he has always inspired me. Um, and he went and did the lat more of the Latin dancing and I was more of a ballroom girl. Latin is where you dance more side by side. It's a little bit sexier and stuff like that. Not that I'm saying my brother's sexy at all. Um, <laughs> and I did more of the ballroom uh, which is like the long dresses and the men in tail suits and stuff like that. So we, we did that so that we didn't have to compete, but then we competed against each other on Strictly. And as I say, I won. <laughs> um, you've competed and won in lots of dance competitions, including European and world titles, but you've been retired from competitive dancing for about 10 years. So how would you say like um, the competitive side of dancing was for you? Like, did you prefer just dancing for fun or did you prefer like competing? I am a competitive person. Like if me and you played a board game or a card game, something like that, I'd be fuming if you'd won. I am very competitive. However, it got to the point, I mean, I, I always had the goal in my mind to to win the world. Once I'd, I realised that I was dedicated 100% to dancing, 
um, I had the goal in my head to become a world champion. So I did everything possible to to become that, which I did in 2013. And um, towards the end of that, like leading up to the world championship, it was it got extremely tough in terms of the practice, in terms of diet, in terms of traveling, earning money, teaching, everything. The, the amount of competitions that we were doing, it, it, it was it was very, very tough. I had a, a, an Italian coach and a Russian coach who were very strict, living in Italy away from my family and stuff like that. So I think, yes, I'm competitive and yes, it was important to me to get to the top. However, I think I what I love about dancing and performing is more the kind of storytelling side of it I just enjoy doing it which is why when I finished competing I didn't really want to become a teacher of it because I still want to perform myself I didn't want to just teach others to perform um, because I love just performing myself so yeah I had a combination of the two As immediately after I left competing and retired from competitions I went to burn the floor which is a, a ballroom and Latin theatre show and I just felt so free and, you know, there was there wasn't it wasn't so focused on technique and being so perfect. It was more focused on the storytelling, which I loved. So you mentioned earlier that you lived in Italy for a while. So did you like learn any Italian? Oh, yeah. So I, I moved over at four, uh, 16, I stayed till I was 30 and so basically when I first moved over the Italians couldn't speak English so I had to quickly pick up the Italian um, and basically that was my first language for a while like I was forgetting English words weirdly there's videos on YouTube of me if, if you if you YouTube me Joanne Clifton Paolo Bosco interviews um i'm speaking english but i have an accent like this is very strange what do you think about uh, world dance sport games now it's really becoming a sport dance sport and this is what it is so it's very good i'm literally with an italian accent because that's the only language that i was used to speaking for quite a few years uh which is really really weird but as soon as i came back my grimbarian northern accent came straight back <laughs> So obviously you were strictly um, strictly come dancing. So how was your experience working on the show? And what would you say your favourite memories were? So obviously I'm extremely lucky to have been on Strictly Come Dancing. It's like, in my opinion, the biggest and best show on TV because it's for everyone. It's from it's for like, you know, you get videos of people doing your dances alongside the telly of people who are like three years old up to people who are like ninety three years old. It's literally for the whole family. It's just like a wholesome show. And um, I think a lot of the newspapers like to make out that there's lots of problems on it or lots of arguments stuff like that. In my experience of the three years that I was on it, there really weren't, there really weren't any, any problems. It was very much like a family. And even us professionals, not the celebrities, us professionals, um, we've known each other since whenever because we've always competed against each other and we're all very supportive of each other it's just a really 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 nice show to be on and of course then I'm grateful that it's given me a platform to now be in musical theatre as well uh and to do and to get certain shows and stuff like that because of it um but yeah it's just a wonderful wonderful show to be on there aren't all these arguments that are made that they're made out to be it's just fun so speaking of musical theater obviously after leaving strictly you joined the musical theater world was that um something you always wanted to pursue and what have your favorite roles been i've wanted to do musical theater since i think uh yeah, I always had my little singing and acting lessons as a kid alongside dancing. And when me and my brother split up dancing together, um, that was the moment when I, when I was deciding whether to go to a musical theatre school or not, because I absolutely love singing and dancing. And I chose the dancing, went, moved to Italy, did my whole dance career, came back to England to do Strictly. And then as soon as I was back in England, when I wasn't on Strictly, I was studying in... Uh, singing and acting again um 
and I just I just love it. My first big show was Thoroughly Modern Millie, my first UK tour, which I loved. I loved that. Then I went on to Flashdance, which was, oh, that was a lot. I did it for like 18 months. That's the one I'm, I guess I'm most proud of because there was, uh, the role's huge. Like there's so much dancing in it, so much singing. I mean, almost every scene, I think there was, apart from five scenes that I could go off stage and have a drink of water. I think I was on stage most of the time. So I'm most proud of myself for Flashdance. Um, but I've just got a role in Shrek which I start in July, I'm going to be Princess Fiona, and that's a dream role of mine, so I cannot wait. So speaking, going on to the topic of Jigsaw, so you, you've chosen to be Jigsaw for ambassador for positivity and play, so what kind of things do you hope to be able to achieve with Jigsaw? Do you know what it is? Look, I've, I've even got a tattoo of, of here, oh my gosh, I hope my mum doesn't watch this, but I've got a tattoo on my arm of I wish, I wish, I wish. And that is to remind me of like, when I was younger and had all these dreams and just keep believing and stuff like that. And just to, and just to believe in stuff, have fun, um, and to keep my inner child. And I think all young people should, should have that. And there's so many, they're facing so many difficult things and, you know, these kids and, and young adults who are, you know, all the things that Jigsaw does, like people, parents and that in prison, stuff like that, bereavement, things like that, they're dealing with a lot. And I think as an ambassador, I want to just give them a moment of taking them out of that world and just letting them play and think positively and dream and wish again, like all young people should be doing. Um, I particularly love jigsaw puzzles i am fifth in britain well i am at the minute it'll be the championship soon and i'll probably lose that title but um fifth in britain at jigsaw puzzles um which i'm very proud of and now i've got a new hobby which is lego uh and i've just made this i wanted to show you that's len goodman with his seven paddle and then i've got the up house i've got them i put them here especially to show you on the video got the up house that I've done um, and so I love 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 playing and building and all this kind of stuff I just, it, you know people could say it is childlike but it's not it's great you can just you can just take your mind off everything and just build something and create something and have fun with it and I'm hoping that that's what I bring so speaking of your title, um, of being fit in the UK for Jigsaw Puzzles, how do you become ranks at Jigsaw Puzzles and how fast can you complete a 100-piece puzzle? Oh, I don't, I haven't actually timed myself doing a 100-piece puddle, puzzle, puddle, <laughs> puzzle, but in the championship, you had to complete a 1,000-piece puzzle in three hours. Now, I did it in two hours, 28 minutes and 10 seconds. So that's my record at the minute. Um, the winner did it in one hour and 19 minutes. So I need to work on that. However, I, do, I just love jigsaws because when I was a kid, I used to do it with my grandma. Uh, my grandma loved jigsaws. We used to do it together when we had some free time or whether, the, whether I went around their house or they were babysitting us. We would just do jigsaw puzzles all the time together. And I just, I don't know. I find it so satisfying. I find it it's weirdly enough, what I sound, find satisfying is the pieces that fit together, the same as in Lego, pieces that fit together. I don't know, it's just so satisfying. And speaking of Lego, what do you think like made you so interested in Lego? And also, will you be complete, competing for a UK ranking this in Lego as well? I mean, you never know, do you? You never know. I might. I haven't even looked into it yet because... I'm not good at it. This this thing of Len Goodman that I've created is the first thing that I've created by myself without any instruction. So this has just come out of my out of my brain. Um, so, so I need to practice more on that before I can enter any competitions. But speaking of competitions, that's what got me into it. I was literally, I'm doing a pantomime at the minute, a spring panto of Rapunzel. And I was in rehearsals and in the evening we were in a travel lodge. And I didn't have anything to do because I'd learned my script and, and stuff. So I just put on the telly, went on Channel 4, Lego Masters. I was like, what is this? And it's literally a competition for, for Lego. And I, I got so 
hooked on it. It's untrue. I was absolutely hooked. I've watched, there's like a, there's two UK series. There's like God knows how many um, Australian series that I need to get through. And I'm just absolutely hooked on it. Great, cool. Awesome. That's brilliant. Amazing. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, Joan. All right.